Hey everyone, welcome back and thank you for clicking on this video. As you can see here, I have June 2023, paper one, technical drawing. So let's get it. So let's go. Number one, we have an ellipse here and it says the diagram illustrates the proper method of. So this is a question we came across before and the answer is C, finding the foci, that's these two, the normal and the tangent of an ellipse. Number two, which of the following terms describes how construction lines should be drawn? Dark, light, chain, or broken? The answer is B, construction lines should always be drawn light or using light lines. Number three, in technical drawing, the phrase curves meeting each other tangentially means that the curves, the answer is A, the curves will meet smoothly. The curves will meet smoothly. Number four, in the diagram, ABCD is a parallelogram. The triangle CDE is equal in area to so CDE, CDE is equal in area to half of ABCD, right? And uh, we would have discussed this before. Basically, the triangle has the same base line as the quadrilateral, and it has the same height. So once a triangle has the same base and the same height of a quadrilateral, then it has half the area. So the answer is D half of a b c d number five which of the following geometric elements has position but not magnitude is it a line an arc a point or an angle the answer would have to be c a point a point has a position but no magnitude you cannot measure a point so number five c Number six, the fire emergency exit doors leading from a workshop should open. The answer is D, outwards, All right? So public doors leading from public spaces should always open outward. Number seven, which of the following diagrams best represents an external and an internal tangent? The answer is B. So this is the external tangent and this is the internal tangent. Number eight, AB is equal to, so this is AB here. AB is equal to the minor axis of this ellipse. So the answer is B. Number nine, which of the following descriptions best fits a quadrilateral? A square-shaped figure, the point where two lines meet, a four-sided figure with two parallel sides and equal sides, a plane figure bounded by four straight lines whose interior angles add up to 360 degrees. The answer is D, number 9D. Number 10. On which of the labeled planes is the plan shown? So we can see all the sides here. We know that the plan is the view from above. So the plan would be on plane number three. So the answer is C, three only. Number 11, which of the following constructions is illustrated above? This is circles in isometrics so this is c number 11 c number 12 which of the following diagrams illustrates how to bisect a straight line all right so let's just look at them the answer is definitely a so you have your line here and you will open your compass to a radius that is more than half the line and you will scribe an arc above and below Keep the same radius, come to the other side, do the same thing to cut the first two arcs, and then you draw a straight line through the intersections of these arcs, and that's how you bisect the line. 
to number 12A. Number 13, so we have a diagram above. And the question is the angle EFH, EFH. So we're looking for the angle at F. The angle EFH is what? Well, the angle EFH is 90 degrees. So the answer is D, 90 degrees. How do I know this? Because EFH is a right angled triangle. It's a right angle triangle. Number 14, which of the following can be found on an ellipse if the major and minor axes are given? Okay, so if you have the major and the minor axes, then you can find the focal points. You can find the focal points, so the answer is B. Number 15, which of the following statements is true? about the construction of a four-sided regular polygon as illustrated above? The answer is A. Four is the 45 degree mark on the bisector of OP. Four is the 45 degree mark on the bisector of OP, so number 15, A. Number 16, if the perimeter of a triangle is 120 millimeters, and its sides are in the proportion 4 to 5 to 3, respectively, then the lengths of the sides in millimeters are... So the first thing we need to do is to add the ratio. So 4 plus 5 is 9, and 3 is 12. Then we divide the total perimeter by the number of units. So 120 divided by 12 is 10. So... In order to find the length of each side, we multiply, well, one unit is 10. So we multiply each number here, 4, 5, and 3 by 10, which will give us 40, 50, and 30. So the answer is D, 40, 50, and 30. Which of the following instruments is used to draw an octagon if the length of one side is given? All right, so if we have the length of one side of the octagon, then we can use a 45-degree set square. So the answer is B, a 45-degree set square to draw the entire octagon. Number 18, which of the following drawings is the end elevation X of the block shown above? So here we have the block. And we have the arrow pointing to this end. It's called X. Um, so A has A is wrong. B is also wrong. C and D are wrong. So, okay. So number 18 has an error. Um, the answer should be a rectangle like this with a hidden line across the center. Right, should be a hidden line across the center. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so it can either be B, but this is not a this is a solid line, but this line should have been hidden. So, the answer most likely may have been B or could have been A if they had put a hidden line here. All right, so I'm sorry about that, but I hope you understand. Number 19, when preparing a drawing sheet, all horizontal lines are drawn with a T-square. The answer is B, T-square. We always draw horizontal lines with T-squares. Number 20, in the diagram above, EF to, e, EF to EF1 is in the ratio 3 to 4. The length of EF1 is, now this is a question that has we have come across many times before, so EF is 45, and 45 contains 3 units. So if we divide 45 by 3, we'll get 15. So each unit is worth 15. So 15 by 3 is 45, and EF1 is 4. So 4 by 15 is 60, so the answer is C, 60. A student falls and hits his head severely against the edge of a technical drawing table. 
he's most likely to suffer from a B, a concussion, B, concussion. Number 22, which of the following statements are true about the square with the 25 in the diagram above? It is an abbreviation for radius, nope. It indicates that the surface is square, yes. It avoids using a second dimension, also yes. So the answer is two and three. So number 24 is C, two and three only. Number 20, sorry, number 22 is C. Number 23, a fire extinguisher painted totally red contains water. A fire extinguisher painted totally red contains water. So number 23 is B. What term describes the points E and F? So this is E and this is F. Those are focal points on in the construction of an ellipse. So that's 24A. Number 25, a quadrilateral with only one pair of parallel sides is a trapezium, a trapezium. C, 25C. Number 26 in the diagram above, the line indicating a cutting plane is labeled. Initially, I thought it was three, but looking at it closer, two actually points directly at the line. Two actually points at the line. So the answer is B, two. Number 27. So we have these angles here. Which of the following gives the order in which the angles are shown? The first angle is obtuse. The second is acute. And the third is reflex. So that's D. Obtuse, acute, reflex. Number 27, D. Number 28. Which of the following ideas are most likely to be implemented when constructing a hexagon? It can be constructed if given the diameter of the circumscribing circle. Um, yes, you can use this. It can be constructed if given the across flats dimensions. This is also true. And it can be constructed by drawing tangents to the circle with a 60 degrees set square. I will say D, 1, 2, and 3. Number 29. Which of the following represents the size of angle X in the drawing instrument shown? So this is a 30, 60 set square. This angle is 90 degrees. This angle up here is 60. And this one down here is 30. So X is 30 degrees A. Patterns for cones and pyramids are produced by a line development known as plane radial curved or parallel? The answer is B, radial. For cones and pyramids, um, the lines start from the center and radiate outward. Hence, they are called radial lines, B. Number 31, if the length of a line on a drawing is 25 millimeters and the scale ratio is 1 to 10, then the actual length is, so it's 1 to 10, um, so, 1 represents the length on the drawing and 10 represents the length in real life. So, 25 by 10 is 250. So, number 31, D, 250. Number 32, which of the following diagrams shows the proper method of bisecting an angle? So, well, I won't keep you much longer. The answer is A. There's an original angle here. C, A, B. And they drew an arc using A as center to cut both C, A, and B, A. Then they used those two points as centers and drew two more arcs which intersected here. And this is how they bisected the angle. So number 32, A. Number 33, the term used to describe the point where all of the lines converge in a perspective drawing is D. It's a vanishing point, D. 
Number 34, a very tricky question. What's happening in this question is that they are reducing the size of the square in a ratio, right? They're reducing the size of the original square in a ratio. Hence, you have one, two, three, these markings here. So the diagram shows the process of drawing a smaller square, but it's not just drawing it, reducing a figure by area measurements, enlarging a figure, nope, enlarging a... So the answer is B. B, they are reducing a figure by area measurements. Number 35, which of the following instruments is used when drawing an irregular curve on a surface development? And the answer is B, again, it's a French curve, number 35B. Number 36, the drawing above shows the development of a truncated what? A cylindrical pipe, rectangular, hexagonal, hexagonal. It's a cylindrical pipe, number 36A. Number 37, when a straight line touches an arc and forms a right angle with the radius of the arc, a point of tangency is formed, number 37C. Number 38, if a car picks up a tack on the circumference of one of its tires, then the path traced by the tack as the car is driven is called... A, a cycloid. It's a cycloid. Number 39, which of the following lines is used to outline a finished drawing? Of course, the answer is, answer is D. D. Number 40. The drawing above shows the correct construction of a Triangle equal in area to a polygon, uh, not exactly. Square equal in area to a given rectangle, nope. A square equal in area to a given rectangle, nope. A rectangle equal in area to a given triangle. This would be the answer. Um, tip, you can see here that the triangle is ABC. It suggests that the triangle was drawn first. And then they filled in two other points for the rectangle D and E. They use the same base as the triangle, AC, but the height of the rectangle is half the height of the triangle. Number 40. D. Number 41. The terms cabinet and cavalier refer to which of the following views? And the answer is A, oblique. In oblique projection, cabinet, oblique, Receding lines are drawn half length and cavalier are drawn full length. Number 42, which of the following diagrams shows the correct division of a line um, geometrically split into two parts, ratio two to three? It's not A, it's not B. This is a very common question. We have done it several times. The answer is C. You can see here one, two parts. And then we can see one, two, three parts. So number 42, C. All right, number 43. So we have a cone. It's an open-ended cone. Which, are, which view will produce the true shape of the hole at the base of the cone? So this is the base of the cone here. It's a cone, so it's a circle, right? The shape. But which view will produce the true shape? The answer is A, plan. So looking at it from above, you will see the true shape of the cone. Um, none of the end views will do that. And the auxiliary plan, the auxiliary plan will be at an angle and will not give you the true shape. So the answer is A, plan. Number 44, given that one of the angles of a rhombus is 120 degrees. Which of the following is the value of one of the interior adjacent angles? So all the internal angles of any quadrilateral must add up to 360 degrees. And if one of the angles in the rhombus is 120, 
then the angle adjacent it must be 60 because when you add 120 and 60, you'll get 180. So that will be one half of the rhombus and then the other half will be 180 as well, which will equal 360. So the answer is C, 60. Five, which of the following diagrams represents the drawing of a tangent to a circle at a point on the circumference? Uh, this, num this answer is A. It's pretty straightforward. Number 46, which of the following ratios represents the scale 1 millimeter equals 1 meter? 1 millimeter equals 1 meter. That will have to be C, 1 to 1,000. A meter will have 1,000 millimeters in it. So the answer is C, 1 to 1,000. And number 47, which of the following drawings represents the plan of the truncated right solid cone? All right, so this is the cone here that was truncated. You can see the angle of the cut. And the answer will be D. The answer will be D, the cut. The angle of this cut matches. That's one, but not only that, it also has cross hatching to suggest that it was a solid that was cut. Again, number, number 48. The value of X in the diagram of the ellipse shown above is... So we have an ellipse here, the major axis is 80, the minor axis is 40. We have um, the two foci are connected by an arc and the radius of that arc is X. So the question is, what is X? Um, X is 40, which is A, X is 40, which is A. And how did we get 40? Basically, from any point on the circumference of an ellipse, the distance to both foci, so the distance to this focus point and this focus point, if you add both distances, you will get the length of the major axis. So even if the point were over here, and you measure the distance to this focus point and this focus point, if you add both distances, you will get the length of the major axis. In this case, it came from the center of the ellipse. So we know that the length of each of them is equal, is the same, and the major axis is 80, so this distance is 40, and this distance is 40, so number 48, the answer is A, 40. Triangle ABC is drawn within a semicircle of diameter 100. So AC is 100. AB is 80. What is the length of BC? The length of BC is 60. All right, the length of BC is 60. I know this because I calculated it. <laughs> But um, I don't have a simple way to tell you how to work it out. But the length of BC is 60. And number 50. The distance between two successive turns in a helical spring is called the pitch. It's called the pitch. So 50C, 51. In the diagram of the hexagon shown above, the value of X is... So the value of X is actually 60 degrees. B, 60 degrees. Number 52. So we have a cone here, a right cone. And it's cut down the center, cutting plane XX. So the question is, which of the following sections best illustrates the cut XX? It's definitely not A and it's not B. It's either C or D. Because of how it was cut straight down the center, I have to say that the answer is C. All right, so the answer is C. If it were cut 
um, diagonally like this, if it were cut like this, then the answer would be B. But because it's cut straight down the center, then the answer is C. Number 53, the drawing above is to be reproduced in third angle projection. On which of the following views can the distance X be measured? End, yes. Plan, yes. Front, no. So one and two, the answer is A. Um, 54, the diagram above shows the elevation of a simple geometric construction. The elevations shown are those of a... All right, it's not hexagonal. It's not... Um, well, it's not a prism to begin with. So A and B are out. It's a pyramid. Um, it's not hexagonal. So it's a pentagonal pyramid. The base of the pyramid has five sides. So number 54, D. Number... 55 so we have a triangle here we have this line this angle is 45 degrees the question says what is the value of angle x okay so this line and this line are parallel they're running in the same direction so that means that this angle here is 45 degrees just as it is up here this entire angle is 180 degrees. So if this angle is 45 degrees, then 180 minus 45 will leave us with 135 degrees. So the answer is C. Number 56. The diagram above shows the development of a... Now for this question, I'm just going to use purely um, elimination. A square transitional piece, maybe. B, a right cone cut parallel to the base. All right, so this is definitely not the development of a cone. So B is out. Square to round transitional piece. Um, I'm seeing the square, but I'm not seeing the round. A right cone cut, on a, cut at an angle to the base. This is definitely, again, not a cone. So by the process of elimination, this is A, 56A. Number 57. Which of the following drawings is a trapezium? The answer is D. This is the trapezium. It only has two parallel sides. Number 58. The method of construction shown in the diagram above is used to draw a tangent to a circle from a given point P. The answer is B. Number 58, B. Last two questions. The diagram shows the construction of a regular hexagon given the the answer is A, right? Nothing else makes sense. The answer is A, the length of the side. So we were given the length of one side. Um, we could have used a set square to draw this side. What happened next was we they took the length of the side as the radius, drew these two arcs. Where the two arcs intersected, that was the center of the circle, so the radius was now from this point to the end of one side. They drew this circle, the circumscribing circle. And using the length of each side and a compass, they made these further cuts along the circumference. And that's how they got the hexagon. Number 60, the perpendicular distance between lines PQ and the RS of a trapezium is 3.5 centimeters. Which of the following lines would be parallel? So this question has come up in all the past papers that we have done. And the answer is C, RS and PQ. These two lines are parallel. And this brings us to the end of our paper.
I hope that you would have learned something. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.